Okay, welcome to a micro video. This time we're taking a look at the market in action and our topic for today is the soaring price of helium. Well, currently there's a worldwide helium shortage and helium prices have jumped over 150% in the last year. And this is a great example of the forces of market supply and demand in action. So in this video, we'll apply some introductory level price theory analysis to the helium market. Uh, we'll keep it simple, so please don't have inflated expectations. So lots of uh, stories in the news at the moment about the price of helium that certainly has been shooting up, affecting businesses in lots of uh, different industries. Think first of all on the two sides of the market. On the demand side, helium is a great example of a product which has a significant derived demand. And what we mean by that is that the demand for helium is not uh, for its own sake but also but, but for the services the products that helium is used to facilitate it's important to think beyond party balloons when it comes to the helium market sorry to be a party pooper but helium is a really important component of medical and aerospace technology in particular use in mri scanners as a coolant so helium has a very very strong industrial demand only 8% of uh, global helium consumption used in 2016, for example, was in helium balloons. Now, what about the supply side of the market? Well, helium gas is one of the lightest substances in the world, and it's typically harvested from natural underground deposits and also as a byproduct from the production of natural gas. At the moment, there's, there's virtually no really cost effective way of artificially producing helium. The marginal cost of supplies is very high but this chart shows the United States is the dominant produ producer supplier of helium in that sense it has a comparative advantage but C C Qatar is a significant second um, uh, supply side source in the market Australia Russia Poland Canada a little bit of production in China but essentially this is a an Algeria United States Qatar supply side dominance the US is planning to exit the helium business by the end of September 2021. There was the Helium Stewardship Act of 2013, which um, monitors the National Helium Reserve, and those reserves are sold off at auction at various points. The last auction was in 2018. So on the supply side, two key supply pressures driving price up. First of all, uh, a year or so ago, Saudi Arabia's economic embargo on Qatar a trade war between two, those two countries, took nearly one third of the supply of helium off the market. A clear fall in supply there. And as we said, the, UK, the USA is planning to exit the helium business by the end of September 2021. The demand side, well, there are here are two key forces causing an outward shift in the demand for helium. Increased market demand from China and other fast growing uh, emerging markets and of course the strong derived demand from the increasing take up and use of high tech manufactured products such as MRI scanners. Helium is essentially an exhaustible natural resource. There are very limited or no substitutes. So it's used as a coolant in military aircraft, for example. Uh, we saw on the chart the manufacture of optical fibers and semiconductors. Uh, as the demand for those types of products goes up, so too does the industrial demand for helium. So how do we build this into an introductory level supply and demand diagram? Many of you will be looking at supply and demand factors as part of your year one micro course. Let's consider an initial equilibrium price. Let's walk through how changes in market supply and demand can impact on the price at which helium gas is bought and sold. In an exam, important not just to put price and quantity on the, on the y and x axis, respectively, but also to contextualize the diagram. So make sure this is the market for helium that we're considering. So let's assume the initial price is P1. Well, one thing we've mentioned in this video is the supply shortage. There's been a fall in market supply. So that causes the MS curve, the market supply curve to shift to market supply two. And other things being the same, that drives the equilibrium price of helium up from P1 to P2. Inward shift of supply, Keteris paribus, leads to a rise in equilibrium price and a contraction of market demand for helium because it becomes more expensive. For example, the cost of a canister, a standard canister of helium gas, has gone up 
uh, according to a news report I was reading recently, from $120 to over $250 per canister. And then the key thing though is whether party suppliers are able to pass on that price hike to their customers. So falling supply is a factor. Uh, so too is increasing demand. Let's add in a demand curve. We said that the industrial demand for helium is increasing, particularly in emerging market countries, particularly its use in, in medical technologies and research. So let's shift out our market demand curve from MD1 to MD2. Uh, an outward shift of market demand is another factor driving the equilibrium price for helium to even higher levels. So we put in our new equilibrium price at P3 with a quantity Q3. By the way, there's no futures market for helium. Typically, the price that's paid is the price that's set at auction, for example. Uh, and the price currently is very, very high. So there's a simple use of supply and demand analysis to help explain why the market price of helium has been going up so quickly. If you just want to take your analysis a little bit further, and you may well have done this in your micro already, you could then uh, discuss and examine the significance of elasticity of demand. Now, according to the papers that I've read, the empirical statistical estimates of price elasticity of demand for helium suggest that the demand for helium is price inelastic. That's mainly because there's a lack of close substitutes or the cost of substitution is particularly high. For example, it's very expensive to develop helium extraction technologies from the air. Helium escapes into the atmosphere during processing or combustion of, of helium bearing natural gas. Uh, a paper by Yui, okay, admittedly now 30 years ago, estimated that the long run price elasticity of demand was only 0.6 in the long run compared with an even lower elasticity demand of 0.5. In other words, consumers of helium are insensitive to the price. People oftentimes have to buy it pretty much regardless of price. How could you then use this change in elasticity to your demand curve? Let's go back to our initial equilibrium price at P1. Let's draw in a more inelastic demand curve, a demand curve with a lower coefficient of elasticity of demand. And you can see here again, if we shift the market supply curve to the left, fall in supply, this time we get quite a significant increase in the market price. So for example, if you were to say in your analysis that the demand for helium is price inelastic, and therefore any supply shock has a significant upward pressure on price, that would be really good, simple, but efficient, effective analysis to use in an exam question. So uh, these may well be tough times for suppliers of helium balloons for parties. A chemistry professor making an interesting claim that the world supply of helium could run out within 10 years. But let's put things in context uh, and think about the concept of opportunity cost. You might be a little bit deflated if your helium balloons cost more for that all important birthday party. But the long run supply issue really has a deeper significance, particularly in the use or the availability as well as the cost of helium in medical technologies and experimental research. Uh, you might have to pay more for your helium balloon party, but actually that uh, reduces the supply available for somebody who needs an urgent MRI scan. There we go, uh, a quick look at market demand and supply in the context of the market for helium.